my dear brother and sister fraternal greetings to you from the carmelite fathers and warm welcome to carmel light reflection on the day's readings it's the 19th of february friday after ash wednesday today we remember saint conrad of piacenza larissa will give us more details on the life and mission of the saint of the day today on the 19th of february we remember saint conrad of piacenza the story of saint conrad's conversion is connected to an accidental arson He was born around the year 1290 to a family of nobles in Italy. He married the daughter of another nobleman and loved her greatly. They lived a pious life together. One day while out hunting, Conrad ordered servants to set fire to brushwood to flush out some game. A strong wind spread the fire to nearby fields and forests and the flames went on to destroy villages. Unable to stop the fire, Conrad returned home in secret with his servants, and they said nothing about their role in the disaster. Authorities seeking the arsonist arrested an innocent peasant and tortured him to confession before condemning him to death. When he heard this, Conrad was filled with remorse and stepped forward to take responsibility for the fire. He was ordered to pay restitution for the damages and sold nearly all of his property and his wife's dowry to do so. The experience caused the couple to consider where God might be acting in their lives. They concluded that God was calling them to a simple life of service, and they gave the rest of their possessions to the poor, and each of them joined a religious order. Conrad took on the life of a hermit. and lived a life of prayer and solitude he became known for his holiness and people sought him out for advice and spiritual direction he moved several times to find greater solitude but people seemed to always find him during a severe famine people asked for his prayers when relief came his fame spread and he was constantly visited by people seeking help A number of miracles were attributed to him and they continued at his tomb after he died. People suffering from hernias often ask for his intercession. Conrad died at Noto in Sicily on February 19th, 1351, while kneeling before a crucifix. He was canonized in the year 1625. Placing all our petitions before him today. Let us together pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that like Conrad, we will always strive to do the right thing, even if it means suffering humiliation and the loss of all our possessions. Saint Conrad suffered these things, but in dying to himself and living for you, he has gained the respect and veneration of many, and now has his eternal reward. which far surpasses any earthly possession or honor thank you father for your love and mercy on us all amen now let's pay attention to the first reading of the day taken from isaiah chapter 58 verses 1 to 9 a reading from prophet isaiah Thus says the Lord God Cry aloud do not hold back lift up your voice like a trumpet declare to my people their transgression to the house of Jacob their sins yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the judgment of their god they ask of me righteous judgments 
they delight to draw near to God. Why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We find ourselves in the first Friday of Lent. Catholics are required to abstain from eating meat. Besides giving up meat today, have you asked yourself, what am I giving up for Lent? Are you doing the typical sacrifices of limiting mobile usage or TV watching, or abstaining from sweets or alcohol or certain favorite foods for your Lenten fast? The reading of today suggests that we may want to hand over our lives to Christ in different ways. The reading from Isaiah begins by asking, Why do we fast and you do not see it? Afflict ourselves and you take no note of it? The people are upset because God does not seem to be taking appropriate notice of their sacrifices. They seem to be saying to God, Oh God, look at me, I am fasting, now bless me. They are making a show of sacrifice without any true sacrifice. And so God says to them through the prophet that making a show of a fast when their hearts are not in it is not a true sacrifice. They go about their selfish lives and sin against others while they are making a show of a sacrifice and then expect God to answer their prayers. This is not the way it works, not then and not for our Lenten sacrifices either. God tells them that if they want true notice from God, they need to change their hearts. Instead of making a show of a fast, they need to start treating each other decently. Instead of denying themselves food as a show, but continuing to advance themselves by debasing others, 
they should help others and fight injustice their fasting is not solidarity or a true sacrifice but an attempt at attention fasting in ancient times was a sign of true conversion of a return to the lord gradually however it was separated from its goal instead of leading one to true holiness it became a measure of one's outward righteousness in other words it became an end in itself and was declared useless in the chapter titled of means and ends in his book rules for radicals Saul Alinsky differentiates means and ends as the end is what you want and the means is how you get it Isaiah scolds the people for treating the fast like an end in itself not a means to identify with the poor and the hungry and a means to greater self discipline and perhaps a spiritual awakening This is an opportunity to look back at our fasting and abstinence in Lent and view them objectively in light of this reading. Do we engage in fasting as an end to be achieved or a means to something greater? And what is that greater goal, greater purpose? What exactly is our end? The message is clear. If doing what is required does not lead you to do what is right then don't do it or at least don't do it that way Hence if the practice of fasting does not lead to conversion and to service then the practice is useless The scriptures remind us today as indeed they do so many times that God is far more interested in the disposition of our hearts than in appearance and empty observance according to prophet isaiah there is a right way and a wrong way to fast the wrong way to fast would be to be so focused on ourselves that we can't really see beyond ourselves Isaiah's words denounce those who allegedly fast and yet oppress all the laborers and let their fasting end in quarreling and fighting striking the poor man with the fist instead the right way to fast the kind of fasting that God wants is to be persons who look outside of ourselves to those in need around us feeding the hungry visiting the sick clothing the naked that's what fasting is all about christ rewards simple ordinary actions that we may even tend to take for granted in so far as you did it to one of the least of my brothers or sisters you did it to me lent gives us the needed opportunity to look at ourselves from the perspective of this kind of fasting am i willing to set free those whom i have not forgiven can i be open to the poor and the needy around me and show love to those i take for granted do i need to be more attentive to others or is the focus of my life squarely on myself My dear beloved in Christ this year for Lent find something that will fit the ideas from the reading something that will be a hardship for you but that will also be a help to someone else perhaps we can fast in new ways this Lent that will have a dramatic change on how we experience Christ and those around us Perhaps we can fast from those things in our lives that keep us from fully living as and being Jesus to others. Allow me to offer one example. 
Many of us have a lot of things stuffed at home, good things, useful things, but unused for years. For Lent this year, consider cleaning out the cupboards and donating the stuff to those in need. Cleaning will be a hardship for you. Getting rid of many of those things will be a genuine sacrifice. But getting rid of them in the right way can help someone else. Instead of suffering symbolically over a favorite food stuff or TV show, do your part in sharing your bread with the hungry and clothing the naked. Instead of giving up, do some giving out. My dear brother and sister, as a response to God's word, we pray the responsorial psalm. Psalm 51 is used throughout Lent and it was used on Ash Wednesday and we pray that psalm again because it's a penitential psalm. Your response, a broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spurn. Let's repeat. A broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Response A broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spurn. My transgressions truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done? Response A broken and humble heart, O God, you will not spurn. For in sacrifice you take no delight. Burnt offering from me would not please you. My sacrifice to God a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spurn. Response A broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spurn. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray for God's blessing, my dear friends. May Almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, we remember all those who are celebrating their birthday today, especially Nilon D'Souza from Kinnigoli, Mangalore, Clara Oliveira from Vijayanagar, Bengaluru, Stani Saldana from Umzur, Mangalore, and Janet Pinto from Bellur, Mangalore. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. We pray for the departed soul of Frank Lewis Kalyanpur Udupi, Lazarus and Agnes Carlo from Malad, Mumbai, and Joyce Corda from Ville Parle, Mumbai. May the Lord grant them eternal rest. My dear brother and sister. We have just begun Lent and many of you were asking whether we have a special project where you can contribute your Lenten sacrifice. As you know, through the Bible Diary Project, we educate the children of the blind. And now through this Lenten sacrifice, 
we would like to establish carmel prayerin scholarship we have schools in the villages especially in the mission areas where poor children find it difficult to pay their fees in order to help them and to educate them we will establish this scholarship for which you can contribute your lenten sacrifice whatever you save from the fast and the sacrifice during this lent will be used to educate these poor children and to have a bright future so you can contact me i am father steven pereira kamlai priest and my whatsapp number is 9481263229 9481263229 see you tomorrow bye bye